EMG biofeedback monitors muscle activity using, using electrodes placed on the surface of the skin. Whenever you try to move a muscle, these electrodes detect the electrical signals sent from your brain. Muscle tension is mostly under voluntary control, although as most of you know, it's not always so easy to relax muscles that are tense. The goal of training may to be, to be to increase or decrease muscle activity or to restore uh, left-right uh, muscle symmetry during static postures and movements for rehabilitation. This is Alan Alda in a PBS program on biofeedback showing how easy it is to monitor and control jaw tension using our MyoTrack sensor. This is helpful for people experiencing jaw pain causing clenching and grinding their teeth. Another way to monitor physiology is to look at parameters related to the heart. There are two principal ways to do this. The photoplethysmograph over here it detects heart rate by reflecting light from blood vessels in a finger, which pulsates with each beat. The second way, which is probably more familiar to you, is called ECG, which monitors heart electrical activity from the chest area or the wrists. Heart rate vari variability of feedback is often used for stress management and to enhance longevity, which I'm sure is of uh, interest to most of you. Uh, it's been found that the lower the heart rate increase with each inhalation, so as you breathe in, the greater the chance of a heart attack in the near, near future. So you're looking to maximize the increase in the heart rate as you breathe in. Thus, the basic uh, goal of heart rate variability is to train users of a greater increase in heart rate with each in-breath and to breathe at a slow, even rate. So we can do this with the biofeedback to train you how to do this, to uh, enhance that activity. The principal clinical applications for heart rate variability training are to teach optimal breathing techniques to asthmatics, to assist in the management of stress and anxiety, to lower blood pressure, and to decrease unexplained abdominal pain. Respiration rate and depth are important measures. The signals are derived from one or two sensor bands placed around the chest or abdomen, which responds to the changes in the girth due to breathing. The goal is to uh, correct dysfunctional breathing patterns and to develop the ability to relax by breathing from the abdomen at about five to seven breaths per minute. Most of you have been taught or developed the breathing technique, which is actually the opposite of the ideal technique to breathe. Take a deep breath now, everybody, a really deep breath. Did your stomach go in or out when you did that? How many went in? Ah, how many went out? you win. <laughs> if it went in, it's the opposite of what should happen since your lungs descend as they fill with air, so your stomach should expand outwards as you breathe in. The old idea of stomach in, chest out, which is you know, a military thing, is completely wrong. You get much more air into your lungs if your stomach goes out as you breathe in. So over here, you can see I've got a little drawing over here, the breathing in and the stomach going out. This is a, a typical training screen. The, the yellow ball will go up here for about three seconds, hold, and then go down here for about five seconds. You breathe with it. It shows that you're breathing at about seven breaths per minute. And the blue line here is actually breathing, the, what you get off the respiration sensor, breathing in and out. And here's the heart rate following it up, 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 and down, 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 down. And it only does it if you breathe at a relatively slow rate, somewhere between five and seven breaths per minute. Otherwise, they sort of they desynchronize. So that's what we're trying to teach people to do. Easy Air is a free program we designed for PC computers. It's available from the website, the Biofeedback Foundation of Europe, which we founded in 1997 to promote biofeedback education worldwide. You can set Easy Air to pop up um, whenever you want, say like every 30 minutes for one minute and do a little breathing exercise with it and then it disappears again. And this is free, so you can just download it and use it on your PC. So let's all do it for about 30 seconds at six breaths per minute. So if we, we're going to follow this little cloud going up and down. And remember to breathe in and let your stomach breathe, go out. So you're breathing di diaphragmatically. Okay, breathe in. One, two, three, and out. Not too deeply, just uh, relax. 
and in and out. And you can keep reading like this, but um, please don't fall asleep on me. <laughs> Skin temperature of the extremities is another way to monitor stress-related changes. A temperature sensor is attached to the fingers or toes to monitor these changes. Increased uh, nervous system activity associated with anxiety and hypervigilance produces constriction of blood vessels leading to cold hands and feet. You've probably experienced cold, clammy hands during stressful periods. A temperature sensor can monitor the temperature of the hand, the, the coldness, while the skin conductance sensor can monitor the clamminess. So this is two ways of looking at the stress response. In temperature biofeedback, a patient watches temperature displays or hears a tone with at least 1 20th of a degree resolution. So very, very small changes in hand temperature. We can actually get down to about 1 500th of a degree. And they just watch the changes going up and down. The goals of the biofeedback may be to stabilize uh, the uh, peripheral blood flow or to increase it, especially under stressful situations. In this image, the green line indicates the rising temperature. And you can see it going from, uh, it goes up about 0.5 degrees over a period of about 35 seconds, which is about the kind of response you'd expect. Teaching hypertensives to warm their hands and feet has proven to be particularly effective in lowering blood pressure by improving circulation to the extremities. It's also very helpful to control headaches and to reduce the painful symptoms of Raynaud's disease, where there's decreased blood flow to fingers and toes, resulting in intense pain. <laughs> 